All right, here we go. We're going to uh, I'm gonna use the computer a little bit on this one because I've got some stuff drawn up on it that makes it hopefully go a little bit faster. All right, but we are talking about lesson 8.6. Um, I don't remember if the book calls the special quadrilaterals in this version of the book, this new edition. This was their title in the old book, but uh, the concept's basically the same. Uh, what we're going to do is give you some information uh, regarding um, some shapes. You're going to have to figure out some shapes, but first off, I want to start with what's called a Venn diagram. All right, so a Venn diagram for quadrilaterals. So let's take a look at this. Um, so this is our Venn diagram for quadrilaterals. You could put this on the back of your other sheets or just on another sheet of paper or whatever. Um, I don't really care where it is as long as you have this concept down of how these things relate to each other. A uh, Venn diagram, if you're not familiar with them, just shows how uh, things might overlap or separate from each other and things like that. So I think you'll kind of get the hang of it here in a little bit. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with, um, and it just kind of says what I just said there, uh, it just shows the relationship between the different types of shapes in this case. It can be different types of whatever, but in this case we're talking about specific quadrilaterals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a box. Right, I'm just going to kind of show the top part of the box. This is kind of like a huge rectangle itself. And I've split it up. It's not quite in thirds. The section over here on the left is a little bit bigger because there's just more shapes over here. But we're going to title the whole thing quadrilaterals. All right? So you can see we got quadrilaterals here. And like I said, this shape right here is a little bit bigger. All right? And then we're going to start with our three basic types of quadrilaterals. All right? So uh, we're going to have parallelograms trapezoids and trapeziums. Now trapezium, that word there on the end is a new word for you. All right, but we'll define each of these as we go. All right, so parallelograms by definition have two sets of parallel sides. Okay, so two sets of parallel sides, obviously if they're parallel they're going to be across from each other, so opposite parallel sides. Trapezoids have one set of parallel sides. And remember by our book's definition and the one we're using, it's exactly one set of parallel sides. And then trapeziums have no parallel sides. Okay, so we, we do have a shape we've talked about that looks like that. All right, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. Now, um, remember some books and some mathematicians say that trapezoids have one or more sets of parallel sides. So in that case, there would be some overlap between these groups. Um, we're not going to have any overlap, so you're going to see a nice straight line down here completely dividing it up. All right, I'm going to move this kind of up the screen a little bit. All right, so let's just start with parallelograms. So what different kinds, well, actually, uh, let me backtrack. I'm just gonna give an example of each just to start with. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna draw an example of each. So we got parallelogram, just their basic parallelogram. I'm not gonna use the word uh, regular, because remember, regular has a very special meaning. So just kind of a normal or typical parallelogram. We've got a trapezoid here with the top and bottom parallel. And in here, you can see a trapezium. We have the left and kind of top right side, those are our opposite sides, they're not parallel, and this side here and this side here are also not parallel. Okay, so we have no parallel sides there. All right, so we can get one of each of those kind of drawn in. And if I am going too fast and you ever need to pause the video, copy these things down, just make sure you do that. All right, now, parallelograms. So what kind of parallelograms do we have? If you think about it, we've got uh, rectangles, those are parallelograms. We've got rhombuses, those are parallelograms. And we have squares, and those are parallelograms. All right, so we're gonna look at how those three kind of fit together. So in this section, this parallelogram section, we have rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. So a Venn diagram is usually where you see these two circles with this kind of overlapping section here, and this is a separation here. All right, but you can do more with a Venn diagram, kind of like we've done here where we completely have three separate areas going on. All right, but anyways, rectangles, so I got a little rectangle drawn here. Rhombuses, so we got a rhombus here and we don't have right angles in the corners. We can, but when we do have right angles on a rhombus, it becomes a square. For a rectangle, we don't have uh, all sides equal, but it can, when that happens, it becomes a square. So what you'll notice with a Venn diagram is that this circle, which is the, the group of rectangles, includes squares. All right, squares are inside the rectangle group. Squares are also inside the rhombus group. So a square, remember, is that overlap between a rectangle and a rhombus. All right. The type of question you might see that's related to this would sound something like this. Um, fill in the blank with the word always, sometimes, or never. And it'd say something like a rectangle is blank a square. So hopefully you'd figure out that a rectangle is sometimes a square. 
okay? Or maybe it'd sound like this, a rhombus is blank a parallelogram. Well, a rhombus is always a parallelogram, okay? Or maybe something like this, a square is blank a trapezoid. Well, by our definition, a trapezoid has exactly one set of parallel sides, so a square is never a trapezoid, okay? So that's the type of question you might see um, out of this uh, Venn diagram. All right, next we have trapezoids, and we have a very special kind of trapezoid called isosceles trapezoids. So we just have our typical trapezoids and then kind of a smaller subsection of isosceles trapezoids. So that's a pretty easy one. There's, there's no really uh, other shape we're going to deal with. Now keep in mind for isosceles trapezoids, we can have three congruent sides, all right? Uh, but we don't have to, we just have to have the legs congruent. The bases cannot be congruent by our definitions. All right? You could have one base congruent to the two legs and get a total of three congruent sides, that's possible. And then finally in trapeziums, hopefully you were thinking about this earlier, we do have a kite. All right? So no parallel sides, but in this case we do have some congruent sides, okay? those consecutive congruent sides. All right? So hopefully this kind of makes sense how this all relates to each other here. All right? Um, sometimes I liken this to, um, you know, animals or whatever. So this would be kind of like our, our dog section here, dogs. And this is cats right here. This whole section is cats. And we don't have overlap between dogs and cats. And then maybe over here you have like, you know, horses. And, and within cats, you have special kinds of cats like, I'm not a cat person, but I'm, I, um, I don't know, what do you got for special kinds of cats? Um, I don't know, a tabby or something like that. I'm sure there's, I know there's one I'm missing. Siamese or something like that, all right? So um, horses, well, they don't overlap with cats and they don't overlap with dogs. So in horses, you've got, you know, um, Appaloosas or you've got something else like that, all right? So um, so anyways, that's kind of what's going on here. Over here, dog one, I'll kind of explain this overlap. So maybe you've got, you know, like Labradors. And then over here, you have like Poodles. And then the overlap is a Labradoodle, one of my favorite names. All right, um, so not my favorite dog, just one of my favorite names. All right, but you got something like that. All right, so you can have some overlap. All right, so that's kind of what's going on there. All right, so look at this one, next page. All right, so this page, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a description in words of a shape and you try to figure out what that shape is. So go ahead and read through that. Try to figure out what uh, shape that has to be and answer that and then we'll check your answer here in a second. So a parallelogram with congruent diagonals but not perpendicular diagonals, all right? So hopefully you're thinking, okay, parallelogram with congruent diagonals. There's a couple of those. Um, rectangles have congruent diagonals and the squares have congruent diagonals. But it says it can't have perpendicular diagonals and we know a square is perpendicular diagonals so that just leaves rectangles, all right? So let's check our answer here. And there we go, we got a rectangle. Yeah, I know it's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, I'm sure you guys love that. All right, whatever, moving on. Okay, next one, a quadrilateral with exactly one set of opposite congruent sides, okay? So let's see, if it has two sets of opposite congruent sides, it's automatically a parallelogram, uh, which would include rectangles and squares and rhombuses, so it's not gonna be any of those. Kites have congruent sides, but they aren't opposite. Uh, so trapezium, eh, probably not, I, mean, I guess they could, but what do we definitely know has exactly one set of opposite congruent sides, and that would be an isosceles trapezoid. All right, see, there we go, isosceles trapezoid. All right, let's go down this next one. A quadrilateral, I'm gonna move this up again a little bit, with exactly one set of opposite congruent angles. Okay, so let's think through this again. Um, we know parallelograms have two sets of opposite congruent angles, so it's not gonna be any kind of parallelogram, so not a rectangle, not a rhombus, not a square. Uh, isosceles trapezoids have congruent angles, but they're not opposite, they're next to each other. Remember kites? Remember how that one diagonal bisects everything that acts like a line of symmetry? So that is, we do have that set of opposite congruent angles, so this is probably a kite. There we go, we got a kite. All right, last one of these. Um, I am a quadrilateral whose diagonals bisect two sets of opposite angles. Okay, so let's think about that and we'll get to the rest here. So a diagonal whose bisects two sets of opposite angles. Well, a kite's diagonals bisect one set of opposite angles. 
So it's not going to be a kite because it says two sets. Uh, trapezoids, we didn't have bisecting any angles. Um, in a parallelogram, no, but if we get special, like a square and a rhombus, we do. Okay, so we're, we're definitely a square or a rhombus. But then it says the diagonals are not congruent. Well, in a square, we know the diagonals are congruent, so that just leaves us with a rhombus. All right, so there we go. All right, so that's the type of thing, by description, you should be able to identify a shape. All right, the other thing, and I don't have any examples of this up here, but I just want you to understand how this might go. There's, make sure you understand the difference between a question like what shape could this be versus what shape does this have to be. So let's say, for example, I say uh, this shape is a parallelogram with congruent diagonals. What could it be? Well, it could be a rectangle and it could be a square. If I change that question just a tiny bit, uh, a parallelogram with congruent diagonals. What does it have to be? Well, it has to be a rectangle. We're not really sure. We don't know if it's a square or not. It might be, it might not be, but it's definitely a rectangle. Okay, so when it says has to be, you're probably going to be, narrow, be able to narrow it down to one answer. When it says what can it be, you may have multiple answers. Okay, um, if it says something like this, uh, this shape, this quadrilateral has two sets of opposite congruent angles. What could it be? Two sets of opposite congruent angles. Could be a parallelogram, it could be a rectangle, it could be a rhombus, it could be a square. If it says this shape is a quadrilateral with two sets of opposite congruent angles, what does it have to be? What has to be a parallelogram? And we don't have any information to go beyond that, okay? So that's the type of question we might see out of these. All right, next one. This time, instead of description, I'm going to give you a picture, okay? So, um, I, I don't really have a way to only reveal one at a time at the beginning here, so I'm going to show you two of them. We'll talk about those two, and then I'll go down and do the bottom ones. Okay, so let's look at this one over here on the left. Okay, this one over here. All right, so what are we seeing here? We see some stuff with the diagonals, and these things are congruent, okay? So this diagonal is being bisected. And these are also congruent, so this diagonal is being bisected. So what do we know about diagonals that are being bisected when both diagonals are being bisected? Well, a kite has one diagonal that's being bisected. Trapezoids didn't have any dis bisecting diagonals. Um, parallelograms did, okay? So some kind of parallelogram. Um, with the different marks, it looks like they're probably not congruent, all right? So we're probably not gonna be dealing with a rectangle or a square, so maybe a rhombus. Uh, definitely some kind of parallelogram. The question comes then, do we have enough to figure out that it's a rhombus? All right, so, hmm. um, you know, this triangle down here uh, is congruent to this triangle up here because of the angle, the vertical angle gives a side angle side. So that means top and bottom are parallel. That's true for any, any parallelogram, including a rhombus, but it doesn't give us enough. The question really becomes, can we get these sides congruent? figure out if consecutive sides are congruent for rhombus. And we, we don't know if these angles are congruent or not. They look like they're probably both right angles, but we can't really go by looks. So at 89, 91 might be a little bit off. So we don't really have enough to get to a rhombus. So we're gonna stop at parallelogram. So there's our, our answer, parallelogram. Okay, all right, what about this one over here? All right, so what do we got? Well, we got a right angle mark down here, perpendicular lines, we got it up here. We got 85 over here. So let's think through what we know. So these angles are supplementary, or we could say that two lines, the top and bottom lines, are both perpendicular to this transversal. So therefore, the top and bottom have to be parallel. We could do that with the uh, property of perpendicular lines theorem, or we could do it with the consecutive interior angle converse theorem, either way. Now, what about the left and right? Do we have enough? Well, we got 90 and 85, so that's 175 degrees. Well, that's not supplementary, so the left and right are not going to be parallel. So we got top and bottom parallel, left and right aren't parallel, so it's got to be a trapezoid. Okay, let's look at this one here. All right, oh, I got to scroll the screen a little bit. All right, here we go. All right, what do we got going on here? We've got, oh, let's see, We've got parallel lines top and bottom. We have a bisected diagonal and perpendicular. Wow, that's a lot. Okay. Uh, a kite has a does have perpendicular diagonals and one of them is bisected. However, a kite doesn't have those parallel lines. All right, so we got to rule kite out. 
trapezoid? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, probably not. It does have the parallel. Let's take a look right here. I can't really draw it, but if you if you want to draw this on your paper, this angle right here and this angle right here have to be congruent by alternate interior angle theorem. And then obviously here we have vertical angle. So angle side angle proves this triangle is congruent to this triangle. And therefore this side up here is congruent to this side down here by CPCTC. So now we have one set of sides that's both congruent and parallel. So it's definitely a parallelogram. Okay, so that rules out our trapezoid possibility. So what kind of parallelogram has got these perpendicular diagonals? Well, we know a rhombus does and a square does. Uh, I don't think we got enough to prove it's a square though. There's definitely not enough to prove it's a square. There's no way we can figure out that you know this angle right here is a right angle, which is what we would need. All right, we got. We can prove these sides are congruent, but that's for a rhombus. So we got a rhombus here, it looks like. All right, last one. All right, what do we got going on here? It looks like a rectangle at first glance, um, but don't go by first glance. All right, so let's see. Do we have bisected diagonals? No, we don't. One mark, two mark, they're actually different. Uh, bisected diagonals here, no. Okay, so we do not have bisected diagonals. That rules out all of our parallelograms. Can't be a parallelogram or a rectangle. Ah, can't be a rectangle. That's what it looked like initially. So this is not a rectangle. Uh, not a rectangle, not a rhombus, not a square. But this is interesting. What happens if you take something with two marks and add it to something with one mark? And then you do that same thing this way, two marks plus one mark. Well, equal things plus equal things should give you equal answers. So this diagonal is congruent to that diagonal. So what do we know that has congruent diagonals? Well, rectangles, but we already ruled that out because they aren't bisected. Squares, once again, ruled that out. They aren't bisected. So that leaves us with isosceles trapezoids. So there we go, isosceles trapezoids. All right, that's what Lesson 8.6 is about. It's just kind of identifying shapes based off of certain characteristics and so on. So that's it for Lesson 8.6.